go to you, uh, Mr. Rubin. The frozen of assets by the United States uh, uh, of the Afghan banks is pretty much of a big uh, challenge for Afghan today. Many economists around the world also call on the U.S. to unfreeze now. Uh, what do you think is the latest situation? Well, I have also called for those assets to be mm. unfrozen uh, and have signed uh, several of those statements. The problem, it's a political problem for the U.S. government because of the sentiment against the Taliban in the United States, which is so strong. And unfortunately, the Taliban have not done anything to make it politically easier for the U.S. government to do what it should do anyway, unfreeze the assets. You know, the fact that they are still banning girls from going to secondary school, that the leader of Al Qaeda was found right in the middle of, of central Kabul. Uh, all of those things that indicate that uh, improving their relations with the outside world is not an important priority for them. Um, now, I think it is the civilians and the private sector and others who are suffering from this, not the Taliban. The United States should go ahead and unfreeze those assets. Um, but in rea real political terms, it won't be able to do that unless there are some gestures from the Taliban that we are not seeing. Mm. Mr. Kaminde, in Pakistan, tell me more about your thoughts about these, uh, these kind of debate. We see that debate going on for almost a year now. I think we've been hearing debates on Afghanistan for more than two decades now. So I think we, this is not something new, but I think the fact that the Taliban have been in power now, there are a number of expectations from the group. Um, and while we do talk about the unfreezing of assets for the Afghan people, um, as Barnett said, there are sensitivities involved, but I feel that there can be other avenues and ways to um, provide um, at least economic assistance. And this is separate from the humanitarian aid. But for that to happen, of course, the Taliban have to honor their pledges of reform. And while one understands that the group obviously is trying to consolidate its position uh, internally within the group and in uh, Afghanistan, while it's trying to grapple with, you know, trying to run um, ministries that it has no uh, capacity of doing simply because they don't have the knowledge to do so, they can deliver on basic yet fundamental rights. And I think the fact that they um, reversed their decision to allow uh, girls to return to high school is extremely problematic. And it isn't the way, it is a major stumbling block that is preventing uh, or rather keeping the international community at bay. Therefore, I think the responsibility does lie on the Taliban to deliver on, on air, in areas where they can, and simply human women's rights, honoring those pledges that they made themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think education is an area that is uncompromisable.